But so so back to zero point zero seven. Great takedown, by the way. Uh, it's, it's 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 just a weird attempt at satire. Like you know, they're trying to like criticize the U.S. and the U.K. for considering China a threat, and why and making the point that oh, you know, they they are the ones that really are spying. It's just really hard to follow, though, from from a logical perspective, what they're talking about. It's just like really confusing. Yeah. And I can't decide whether it was supposed to be bad. Do you know what I mean? Like, did they think that this was good and then published it? Or did they not care it was bad and published it because they thought that like, it's going to get a lot of traction because everybody's going to make fun of it, but then they're still watching Chinese propaganda it's it's really hard. Like I don't know if they have like those layers of. I mean, maybe they thought this is awesome. Co- co- it's it's like Communist Party officials. They think they're good, but they're actually bad. Hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. If if you want to subject yourself to the f- whole like four and a half minutes, longest four and a half minutes of your life, uh, you can check it out on Twitter. I don't know if we want to provide the link because then we're just. We're, we're, helping we're helping them. them. Yeah, this is the thing. This, it's like, this is, this is it. it is this be... like some kind of 4D chess where they know China Unscripted will make fun of them and then millions of people will watch it because millions of people watch us. Yes, you millions know. of people watch China Unscripted. Absolutely. Uh, well, you know, the Richard Moore, the head of MI6, res- replied on Twitter to this spoof and thanked them for the free publicity. Oh, well, so, I guess spy agencies aren't good at satire. I mean, like, that's not, I just that's don't not a great know burn. Who was providing publicity for who at this point? Are they right? all in it together? Maybe. Oh my gosh. The governments of China, the UK, and the US all got together and <laughs> decided. Well, yeah, I don't it, think that was it. it, it they, obviously, the, the lizard people had a secret meeting in the okay, middle of the hollow moon. Okay, can we put a? Can we? <laughs> we need a mute button for Matt. Hey, that would be a good feature in the new studio. Yeah, mute, write it down. Let it down. We were talking about the spray bottle, but I like the mute, bo- <laughs> the the mute, mute button. The mute button. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, actually, no, that's, that's, that's Anderson, fair. you could do that for us in post. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> Go back and mute him. <laughs> don't, don't do it, Anderson. Don't do it. <laughs> but, but uh, you know... It's not like the U.S. doesn't do cringy videos. That have you guys seen that FBI videos about a few? This was a number of years ago. Yeah, there were there was some recent thing that they just came out with. Oh yeah, about yeah. Like, like an American like student taking money to provide yeah, this intelligence. Was, this one was that one was from back in like I don't know 2013, 2014, 2015. It was a long time ago. Th- th- but, 2013 wasn't that long ago, Shelley. Okay, sure. It was like uh, three or four years ago. It was uh, three or four years ago when the FBI decade. made this video called Game of Pawns. Pawns, P-A-W-N-S. Okay, intelligence agencies are just not good at that time. No, no. And it was it was a... Uh, <laughs> Did they hire George Lucas? <laughs> I don't know. We'll no, call it, we'll actually, call it Game of but I Pawns. actually like did Game talk to the screenwriter who wrote this um, movie for the FBI that was about. Um, was his name Borg Lucas? No. I'm, I'm, in, I'm imagining like George Lucas with a fake beard oh, on top okay. of his real beard, <laughs> saying, "Hi, hey, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Borg Lucas. Uh, I got, I got a movie called a Game of." Game of Pawns. It was a. It was a 2013. It was the story of Glenn Duffy Shriver, who was this American college student who went to China to study and then basically got roped into like working for the Chinese like Ministry of you know something public Ministry of State Security. They tried to recruit him as a spy, but he was kind of incompetent. Like they wanted him to go back to America and try out for the, like take the test for the CIA, but he um, failed the, uh, uh, like the lie detector test. Mm-hmm. And the the CIA and FBI knew that he was taking money from China and basically uh, arrested him. He ended up serving a few years in prison for it. And so they made uh, a video basically warning other Americans, because you all saw it, uh, basically telling them not to become Chinese spies. Yeah, they actually did take this um, like video and play it in universities and stuff. Really? Yeah. The they should have play, played it as like movie theater trailers. 
it was a little longer than a movie theater trailer. But I see what you mean. That's actually something that the Chinese Communist Party does. They play propaganda. Yeah. I wonder if they play that movies. at Harvard since there was that Harvard uh, professor who just <laughs> was convicted of hiding his connections to China. It was Charles Lieber. Uh, he was, he was secretly, he, he was getting like paid like $50,000 a month to work uh, with like a, it's a not Wuhan. even clear if he was actually doing anything or if it was essentially like, a like, we'll put your name here because you have, yeah. you're a prestigious scientist and then you're g- going to be affiliated with our Chinese university now. And there's no, he wasn't convicted for spying or anything like that. Yeah. He, it was for hiding his, uh, like financial connections to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lying to the U.S. government about it. Yes. And at some point he must have realized that this was a bad idea, that he had done this. And you know what I mean? Otherwise, why would he be lying about it if he was like, yeah, this is fine to... You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that is part of the challenge. Like, just a lot of people don't have any idea. Or maybe... maybe I do wonder what was going on in his mind. Did he... I mean, yeah, as you said, he must have known something was off if he felt he had to lie about it. Uh, well, I mean, maybe if the FBI is asking you about it, then you're suddenly like, oh, crap. Oh, I should lie to I, the, FBI. the FBI. This is <laughs> big brain. Huh? <laughs> They'll never, never catch me there. Wow, these Harvard professors are smart. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it reminds me, I like, I really, I, I like what uh, Jim Cramer said uh, this week on Mad Money, where he was like, I can't recommend Chinese stocks because they're like a hostile communist regime. And he like, didn't I, actually say hostile. He didn't say hostile? That was in the Chiron. But he said uh, they were a communist regime, totalitarian dictator. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he went on to call Xi Jinping a terrorist dictator and, uh, you know, said that he kill, he's killing a lot of people and mentioned the concentration camps and essentially brainwashing. So I think, you know, hostile was probably implied. Yeah. Yeah. But it's great, great to hear that more people need to be talking about China like that. Yeah. I mean, Jim Cramer, this is a very fast about face because- Yeah. Just a few months ago, right? Yeah. Back in the summer, he was talking about how you should buy the DD, uh, the Chinese uh, like version of Uber was listing on the uh, Wall Street, basically. And he was like, buy DD stocks as soon as they go public, you know? And uh, that was July. And now he's like, okay, China is a communist regime and you should never buy anything uh, from them, et cetera, so. Yeah, I wonder what happened. Well, DD crashed. DD crashed, but like, I, what, do you think that was, what was, I, I, mean, I doubt that was enough. Framer also mentioned the geopolitical things that are happening, basically, where he was saying that, like, okay, a lot of these companies, Alibaba, um, Tencent, one of these companies might do well, but that doesn't mean their stocks are going to do well because of the geopolitical things that are going on between mm-hmm. the U.S. and China. And he mentioned a new Cold War, et cetera. Yeah. So it's great that that message is getting out there more and more. I think it was great that um, this past week there was the stories from the Washington Post and the New York Times about how how much data the Chinese Communist Party is harvesting about from Americans using their social media, using uh, Twitter or Facebook. Yeah, it was interesting. It was kind of like both the Washington Post and the New York Times were doing the same thing, which was looking at Chinese government procurement documents uh, where they were like, like basically saying, we need this technology, we need the software, please come and bid for this. And then companies would submit their bids and this was all available um, on the internet, which I think is probably no longer available on the internet. But what they did was essentially look at all these documents and see that the Communist Party was spending hundreds of millions of dollars, I'm sorry, hundreds of thousands of dollars at a time, so millions total, uh, on software to spy on people, not just in China, but also in the U.S. and, and anybody using Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Yeah, keeping, a, keeping track of like, you know, if somebody says something negative about China. Yeah, and uh, a lot of the software, it would automatically flag like there would like there would be like an alarm sent to the companies to alert them about like big negative trending stories about China or uh you know if it was really bad there was a 24/7 hotline that went directly to China's censorship bureau that the people working at these software companies were supposed to call it's they're so hard working they can have a 24/7 hotline like that and still put out great 
propaganda pieces like 0 0.07. That was a different bureau. That's <laughs> they're, they're so hardworking. Well, I think the interesting thing about the what the Washington Post and New York Times were talking about, and we did a video on China Uncensored about this topic. Uh, last, last, last week. We'll, we'll put a link we'll to that one below. That, That's, but like, it's an interesting episode. It is. It's called China is tracking you online. And it, it is because it is that it pretty much shows that China is tracking uh, everybody online. It's the actions of a hostile communist regime that is at war with the United States. But uh, what was interesting was the idea of public opinion guidance. Mm -hmm. um, that the Chinese Communist Party, they call the software public opinion analysis software, which sounds very innocuous, right, and boring. But actually, what they want the software for is for what they call public opinion guidance, which is essentially using censorship and propaganda to change how people talk about things online or how people think of issues, right? And one of the things they were talking about is how China is now taking this public opinion guidance that they are already implementing inside China and uh, spreading it throughout the world. Even that terrible Xinhua propaganda thing is public opinion guidance. <laughs> <laughs>